everything you didn't know about Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen worked for NBC for over two decades and found widespread fame in the mid nineties as the host of Datelines to Catch a Predator. The show focused on sting operations set up to catch sex offenders, with Hansen showing up at their door to confront them before they were arrested. For a while, it was one of the network's biggest shows, but despite being a crime journalist, Hansen himself is far from squeaky clean. News emerged this week of his larceny arrest, and we couldn't help but dive into his shady past even further. You might be surprised at what we found lurking in his closet. Join us as we take a look at everything you didn't know about about Chris Hansen. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos about your favorite movies and TV shows. Caught Out The TV journalist is better known for catching the scum of the world, but he was on the flip side this week when police arrested him, albeit for the bouncing of checks. Connecticut cops confirmed to TMZ that they had caught up with the host after he failed to pay a vendor near $13,000 for stuff that he bought back in 2017. Although he had fobbed off the store with two checks, they bounced and Hansen made no attempts to pay them in any other way. So, what did the star spend? all of that money on? 355 mugs, 288 t-shirts, and 650 vinyl decals for marketing events that he had coming up. The owner of the store explains that they assumed such a high-profile celebrity could be trusted with paying his tab, so they delivered the items and patiently waited for Hansen to cough up the cash. They gave him plenty of time to rectify the situation before getting the cops involved. After the first check bounced, Chris tried to dissuade the owner from going to the cops by asking if he could make four partial payments. When they declined the offer, he sent a second check, which was also a dud. Finally, he emailed the store saying that he was going to sell his boat to pay the bill, but a third check never arrived. A warrant was issued for Hansen's arrest and he turned himself in on Monday, before being booked and released. Extramarital Affair this guy thinks she's coming to hang out with a 13-year-old girl. What pizza do we have tonight? Until I show up. Even before his latest scandal, Hansen wasn't as squeaky clean as you'd expect the host of a crime show to be. In 2011, the then 51-year-old was caught on a date with a blonde television reporter, who he had been seeing for the past four months despite being married to wife Mary Joan for years. 30-year-old Christian Cadell was the object of his affections. The couple had no idea they were being secretly filmed as they enjoyed a romantic dinner at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel before going back to her Palm Beach apartment for a cozy night in. The undercover sting operation was arranged by the National Enquirer in a bid to expose Hansen's dastardly ways. A source reportedly approached the tabloid with the story, telling them that Hansen and Cadell had met the previous March at a private party. Cadell, who interned with NBC in New York, introduced herself to the older man and the pair had an immediate physical connection. They supposedly started their sordid affair the very same night. While Chris didn't say much about it in public apart from to deny it, Cadell later sold her story, telling the media that Hansen promised her that he was leaving his wife, that his marriage was miserable, and that they were so close that she assumed a divorce was imminent. It soon became clear after the affair was outed that he never had any intention of leaving his wife. Cadell was turned down by a dozen major market news stations after the news broke. Lawsuit Woes Chris goes in pretty hard with the crew on To Catch a Predator, in some cases, maybe a little too hard. Back in 2007, the sister of one of the perpetrators filed a lawsuit against Chris and NBC after her brother shot himself in the head moments before Hansen stormed in. Louis Conrad spotted cops and the camera crew headed towards his home in 2006, but grabbed a gun and shot himself before they could catch him. NBC alleged the Texas prosecutor, a highly praised 20-year law enforcement vet, went online and tried to make physical physical contact with a 13-year-old boy. His sister claims that the network was responsible for his death by conducting the sting operation intentionally with negligence to sensationalize the situation. She was asking for 100 million bucks to presumably ease her pain. While it was a tragic development, it didn't slow the show down and they continued to operate in the same way. Inspired by Jimmy Hoffa What do you think should happen to you? 
guess I have no choice but to go to jail. Like most of us in life, Hansen was inspired by things that he saw on the TV growing up. When politician Jimmy Hoffa went missing in 1974, the 14-year-old Chris was glued to the news coverage on his family TV set. In an interview with the Lang Sing City Pulse, he would later say that watching how the FBI and police investigated the case made him realize that he wanted to do something with TV journalism. He went on to study at Michigan State University College of Communication, Arts and Sciences, graduating in 1981 with a bachelor's degree in telecommunications. It wasn't long before his career with NBC took off, as he landed a spot as a reporter for the Lang Sing NBC affiliate Wilkes before he even graduated from college, going on to rub shoulders with the likes of Katie Couric and Tom Brokaw. His affair cost him NBC. When the news scandal initially broke in 2011, Hansen remains pretty unaffected by the whole thing. His wife didn't leave him, and NBC stood by him. It wasn't until 2013 when Cadell spoke out in detail about her tryst with the married man that the network took a stand against him. Worried that he would no longer be seen as the trustworthy criminal catcher they needed him to be, they gave him two weeks' notice and didn't renew his contract. When the news of his affair with Cadell first reached the media, Hansen dismissed it as full of hurtful lies, but the 30-year-old blonde had proof. The network made their announcement three weeks after Cadell released pictures of her kissing Hansen. That's put the kibosh on Hansen's 20-year-long career with the network, where he won seven Emmys and a number of other awards. NBC released a short statement that didn't offer up any explanation for his sacking, saying, Chris has been a valued member of the team and we thank him for his many contributions to Dateline and NBC news over the last 20 years. We wish him the very best. No one needed NBC to give a reason, because it was clear as day. Hansen v's Predator No, Chris. And if he thinks he's in for a shock, so am I. What are you doing here? Something strikes me. It looks familiar. After NBC gave him the boot, Chris Hansen was forced to look at other ways to earn his livelihood. But it wasn't as easy as picking up a job elsewhere. After all, if NBC fires you, that's a lot of connections down the pan. The TV personality set up a Kickstarter campaign in 2015, asking people to donate so he could set up his own version of a show similar to Catch a Predator. Hansen V's Predator needed $75,000 to get off the ground, and a number of devoted fans helped him survive past that goal. However, they were left disappointed. Donors were promised gifts for their contribution, from coffee mugs and signed photos to t-shirts and personalized voicemail greetings. The merchandise was supposed to be sent out by December 2015, but the goods never arrived. The Kickstarter page was updated in April of 2016, with a message saying that the goods would soon be delivered and the show would soon be on the air. It's still not clear if backers ever got their goods, and the whole thing seems incredible incredibly odd, especially when the star is now in hot water for not paying for the exact same goods he was giving out. To catch a predator was shady. Not all the predators I catch are interested in young girls. Some, like this guy in the bright orange shorts, lust for young boys. While we all want sexual predators off our streets and away from our children, the show was often branded as dangerous and irresponsible, with critics arguing that it could inspire vigilantes. The company behind the Sting side of things, Perverted Justice, started out as a very small enterprise run by a man called Philip John Ide. Ide eventually began expanding his Portland investigations by working with local TV stations. When NBC came a knockin', he hit the jackpot, with the network paying him $100,000 per sting. Perverted Justice did the work so Hansen could turn up at the door of these individuals, berate them, and send them out to waiting police officers. The thing is, while it all sounds like a noble idea, Ide was the weirdest of the weird. He would later change his name to Xavier Von Erk, set up a non-profit in the hopes of avoiding tax payments, and once called victims of Al-Qaeda shameless and pathetic on his blog. Not only that, but he also pretended to be a woman online to try and seduce an enemy in the hopes that it would ruin him. It sort of makes you question the moral stance of the show, doesn't it? Especially as 
Chris Hansen and NBC knew all of this and yet continued to work with him anyway. However, given Hansen's own shadiness, we can't say that it's exactly a surprise. His wife is too good. Not much is really known about Hansen's wife of over 20 years, but what we do know is that she stood by him, despite the cheating scandal, and by the looks of it, his money problems. As well as raising their two sons, Mary Joan has devoted a lot of time to charity work. At the beginning of 2018, she was named the executive director of the AISS Foundation, a charity that helps disadvantaged students with their education. She accepted the post graciously in a statement, telling the press that she couldn't wait to work with the charity that had such an incredible reputation. How can such an admirable woman put up with so much from Hansen, who is clearly one of the most disorganized messes in the entertainment world? The jury's still out there. But as for Hansen, well, he'll probably end up in court soon. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, and don't forget to check out one of the other two videos on your screen.